Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. Once again, thank you to everybody out there for clicking the like button, watching the channel. I greatly appreciate you. Let's jump into a little bit of this um, XRP news. Let's begin here. So Ripple put out this, this little uh, post here on ripple.com. I wanna begin here because it tells a lot about where everything is going. It confirms a lot of what I've been saying. I've been telling people that the uh, some of the banks, uh, you know, commercial banks mainly right now are completely uneducated on the technologies. They're used to the old system. We have to bring them over. We have to bring them on board. We want their money, right? So, so we have to take into account that education curve. You just can't get around that. You have to educate the people, but there's so many um, there's so many individuals who believe that these people are abreast of the technology, that they know how to use it. No, we can't. And we can't think like that either, that these people are so high and mighty that they're just educated on everything. They're not. All right. So in order to bring in those new partnerships, deals um, and have that type of capital flowing from all of these um, all of these financial institutions that may not be a part of Ripple just yet, we have to know. Uh, the truth of the situation that they're not educated and then educate them. Uh, and, and, and once they're educated, they're going to see all the benefits of XRP and want to use it. And then what happens? That's even more entities that have to hold XRP. And then if they're all holding XRP and transacting in XRP, which like I always like to iterate and reiterate on demand liquidity is patented. So they're going to need us. You can't get around that patent. Thank goodness for that. What does it do to that price? Read this. Let me read this a little tidbit to you. It says, while crypto has become much more than just a buzzword, many finance leaders still don't fully understand the technology. Ripple is telling you that. So now, now it's not just Alphanine. Actually, we've gotten corroboration on a lot of different stuff that I've been saying over the last year from a lot of big companies and individuals over the last few months. Have we not? We make some good calls here. It feels good to finally have people coming out and uh, iterating these these same truths, in my humble opinion. Uh, so now let's get back to this here. It says many finance leaders still don't fully understand the technology and the business advantages it provides. So what are they trying to convey to us? They're trying to tell us, listen, we have brought in a lot of partnerships, but we can bring in so many more. But before we bring in more, we're going to have to educate them because they don't even know why they should use the technology. That's going to take a little bit of time. Like I said, I, I anticipate floods first, floods of capital first into XRP, then the tsunami. I will love it if all happens meteorically. I'll take that as well. I want it. Um, but I have to look at it from both perspectives, right? So then it says here, instead, there are a lot of interpretations and opinions circulate, circulating around the meaning and use of crypto what to do with it, how to regulate it, and its potential to transform the world as we know it. And that's why it's important for both the blockchain companies and we as investors to control the information that surrounds crypto, not allow the main, mainstream legacy system and their media wing to control it because they're going to misuse it as they do almost everything. No, we have been taking control. This is why it's good that we have been fighting and our fight has uh, definitely uh, had its impact for certain. Did you see the article? I don't know if I had it here. Did you see the article where senators are now accusing the SEC of malpractice? Did you see that? That's that's a, I don't know which senators are doing this, but that's us. We made that happen. They sat back for so long. We've made so many phone calls, emails. I mean, we've done so much. And now finally, they're starting to feel the fire and have to act on these things. Not only that, but along the way of sending all of these emails and making phone calls to all of these, to, to, to Congress, to the senators, to mayors, to pretty much everybody. We pretty much been contacting everybody as well as, you know, we've contacted the Fed, um, uh, various business institutions. We've been working hard to make sure that the DLTs and crypto can do what they're supposed to do and why so that that capital can flow in. We're here to make money. So we've been working toward the money. And finally, yeah, we're starting to see some uh, some good things come out of that. So <laughs> let's continue on here. 
says, regardless of what you might have heard through the grapevine, there are real crypto solutions that are already making a significant Im impact on business across industries and around the globe. Now, that leads me to this next article. XRP, Ripple, and his partners have been doing major things, but it's not always, the dots are always not always connected. This is where we need to borrow just a little bit of spirit from our, what are they called? Our Riddler brothers in the crypto community. They connect a lot of good dots. Um, check this out. Ripple made this post a, some time ago. But if you remember this post, this is what it says. It says, today, we are building on that foundation, announcing the addition of seven financial institutions to our ever growing network. Now, if you remember, a lot of brilliant minds have told you that the, 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 there is no limit on XRP's price where it can go. It is only limited by what's issued on the chain. We can take as much value as people are willing to issue. And that can cause XRP's price to absolutely skyrocket. I mean, it would be unbelievable. And I definitely want it. So you've heard that. Then you have this here, right? They have all these financial institutions signed up. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere. Now, here is a list they give you of these seven financial institutions that they had brought onto the network at that time. Santander, Unicredit, I'm gonna save that one for last. Rice Bank, CIBC, National Bank of Abu Dhabi. We'll get to that one later. Oh my goodness, the, the money is going to flow. Do your own research too. Don't just rely on me or other content, people, whatever you wanna say. No, do your own research. National Bank of Abu Dhabi. Do you see what's been going on in that region? You see how heavy they're going in distributed ledger technologies and XRP is deep all throughout that region. We're gonna move a lot of that value over there. I mean, the commodities, the, the uh, raw capital, we're gonna move a lot of that. They love XRP over there. Not only that, remember, Hedera just went over there, had a meeting in the United Arab Emirates. So Hedera's over there deep as well. But the bank I wanted to get to was UBS. We're in deep with UBS. Wait, let me, this is what it says here. UBS are among the latest banks to adopt Ripple to improve their cross-border payments. We're gonna be doing everything for them. Not just cross-border payments. Cross-border payments, who's better than us? Who's better at, than us at that? No one, no one. Who does interbank payments better? No one. Who, who, who's going, who, who would you rather, uh, Who's better than us at the tokenization of everything and trusting us when we have so many banks signed up? No one. They're going to use XRP. They're signed up. Here, they just told you that, right? Correct? Now you might say, Alpha that's old news. No, no, no. Did you see what UBS just did? Let me go. Let, let's, let's go cover this. This blew my mind. I'm so ready. XRP is doing a great job. I get a little excited. Just bear with me. Right? This is from usnews.com and it was released today. UBS Bank, uh, UBS launches digital bond that straddles blockchain and traditional exchanges today. I did that today. Do you understand what this means? Do you understand the value? Digital bond. You, you guys not ready. You think you're ready. You're not ready for the explosion. I mean, man, oh my goodness. Let, let's read this. Let's read it. It says, <laughs> UBS AG launched a 375 million Swiss franc, $370 million bond that the Swiss bank said on Thursday was the world's first digital bond to be publicly traded and settled on both blockchain based and traditional exchanges. UBS is with us. UBS is with Ripple. Listen, that means that a lot of that value is going to come to us a lot uh, in the future. They're, this is only going to increase. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen at an exponential rate. You know, they want to bring everything over to the over to the blockchain, over to the DLTs. Hashgraph is involved as well. Stocks, bonds, futures. We just covered a few articles the other day. 
You know, LCX is trying to do that. LCX trying to become a bank, but they're also trying to bring over all of these different traditional things. Let's uh, let's scroll down here a little bit more. This is going to be major. It says the digital bond has the same legal status as rating uh, and rating as a traditional UBS AG senior unsecured note. Quote, we are proud to leverage distributed ledger technology to launch the inaugural UBS digital bond. This shows our commitment to support the development of new financial market infrastructure. Like I said, UBS is with us. So a lot of that value is going to come to us. I anticipate that it will more, uh, more of it will be happening when uh, the SEC case is over and then people are just able to use uh, XRP outright, Ripple outright. But once again, I read it to you before. They're with us. Do your own research. This is from Ripple.com. It says, uh, today we are building on that foundation, announcing that the addition of seven financial institutions, UBS was one of them, right? Among the latest banks to adopt Ripple to improve their cross-border payments. So we'll keep an eye on this, but that is huge as an indication of how much stuff, uh, how, how much of uh, value could be coming to the XRPL, to XRP. And this was from, uh, this was uh, a lot of these quotes came from um, Chris, Chris Larson. It says, Ripple CEO Chris Larson sees this as a major milestone on our long-term path to realizing the internet of value. Now, let's continue on because I don't want to get, <laughs> I don't want to confuse myself too much. We have a lot to go through here. Um, so also, another thing that excited me here, anything that happens with Japan has my ears and my eyes wide open. Why? Because Japan, we're deep in there when it comes to XRP. I'll talk about that in a moment. Then we're also deep in Japan when it comes to XLM. Why? Let me explain both. XRP, the, the head of SBI Remit said what? I repeat this very often, that the head of SBI Remit believed that every bank in Japan would use XRP. There's a reason that he said that. So that's one. That's how XRP is deep in Japan, as far as I'm concerned. Second, secondly, XLM. Remember that one of the um, the founders of Lightnet, we're going to get to them as well in this video, of Lightnet uh, owns 7,000 7-Elevens in Japan. Lightnet is built on what? Stellar. Lightnet is running across what? Stellar. Okay. Lightnet merged with who? Every net, every net merged with who? Velo. Velo is run by who? Mike Kennedy. Mike Kennedy ran what? It still runs what? Interstellar, the for-profit branch of Stellar. Do you see the connections? We're deep in Japan. So anything that happens in Japan, I'm very excited about. That's why. Now here's a little article here. This is from Cointelegraph and it says, Japan's digital agency launches DAO to explore DAOs and Web3. Now. This is exciting to me because they're getting impatient. They want the systems to be up and running now. You're seeing so much activity. So this tells me, look, listen, if they're doing testing on DAOs and it's a few other things that Japan has done over the last few weeks that indicate to me they're ready to roll out the new financial system. That's what this is an indicator of, in my humble opinion. Just my humble opinion. They're ready to roll out the new financial system and they need it more than most. Have you seen what's going on in Japan lately? Economically, all right? You see what they've been doing with, with their currency? All right, okay, so you know already. They need it. So they're starting to experiment. This is very good. There's a lot of capital that can come out of Japan and flow through XRP, flow through XLM. Remember Project Stella? They've been involved in a lot of different things. So now, it says here, according to digital agency, it planned to investigate aspects of digital assets and DAOs, digital assets and DAOs. We just, what did I just say about who's deep in Japan as far as digital assets? XRP is deep in Japan and XLM is deep in Japan. But let's keep it going. Uh, it says DAOs that could potentially be used for cross border. <laughs> My goodness. So then they have a little bit of FUD here. I'm not gonna read that little part. Um, the announcement suggested that the agency could conduct blockchain analysis of complaints related to digital asset space from 
Japan's authorities. Of course, any of these, there's always rogue elements to all of these governmental entities that make money, lots and lots of capital off the legacy system, lots and lots of capital off of proxies, lots and lots of capital off of uh, uh, intermediary fees, and they don't want it to end. Why? And I, I get it. I understand it. As a businessman, why would I want my money <laughs> To that stream of, of, of healthy income to be over. So they're going to fight back. So you're going to see that from here from time to time. That's all that is. OK, now let's move on here. So first, we're going to cover a little bit of Algorand and then we'll go into a little bit of Stellar. All right. Um, Algorand is still doing wonderfully when it comes to advertising. They made this little tweet here. It says this is what 2022 to 2023 at Drone Race League, at Algorand World Championship Season Opener. This is from uh, Nicholas Harbachzewski. Look how they phrased that. Not this is what Drone League, this is what's coming for Drone League Championship. They didn't say that. They said this is what's coming for 2022-2023 at Drone League at Algorand World Championship Season on Opener. This is huge. This is very good. Any advertisement goes a long way to bring in new partnerships and new capital just from like fans. It doesn't even have to be from businesses, from fans. We'll take all the capital that we can get, all the value that we can get. But Algorand as a whole has been doing a wonderful job pushing their blockchain forward and leaving no one behind. They've done a great job in my humble opinion. So I love to see this here. Now let's go to this next, this next tweet here. So then also, another major thing I think that's going to, to um, bring a good amount of capital to Algorand. So they made this little tweet here about Venue One. And it says here, Venue One is a non-custodial decentralized prediction protocol built on Algorand that allows participants to take positions on the outcome of real world events. So they let you, you know, make predictions. And of course, if you get the prediction correct, you make money. Um, but they let you do it for sports, uh, entertainment, the finance world, which would be very interesting love to make predictions. They love to make money off of predictions. Um, they love to um, they love to take that chance. And, 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 you know, that's billions, of course, expanding into the future, in my humble opinion. And they're going to be bringing that to Algorand. That gets me very excited. What does it do to that price? So you saw what Algorand, repeti uh, 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 repetition is the mother, mother of learning. So I say some things just to connect the dots at times, okay? But you saw what Algorand's price did off of retail. We experienced a few parabolic runs. We got in very, very low. Very, very, very low on Algorand. So we did, and then we had a few parabolic runs last year before everything went down, of course, right? Now, that was just from retail. What happens now when you have all these business institutions utilizing Algorand? They're, they're getting mixed up in the healthcare systems, um, banks involved. You know, you have, I mean, your payroll where we have Bitcoin running across us for certain countries. There's so much going on. We have advertising, advertising everywhere. We have done so much more. So then what does that what does it do to that price in the next bull run or when mass adoption hits? Right. So now let's move on here. So also right along the lines of advertising genius, you have FIFA World Cup coming up in Qatar. Right. So it says here, this is from Algorand Indonesia it says FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. And here you have Algorand. Algorand is going to be advertised everywhere at the World Cup. I mean, this has been happening, but uh, 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 at FIFA events, because Algorand is deep with FIFA. That's a ton of people that are going to be seeing Algorand advertisements, large businesses that also will be seeing Algorand's advertisements, big money in Qatar, seeing Algorand's advertisements. That is very, very good. That, that really heats up the potentiality for what could occur and what could happen, in my humble opinion. So I love to see something like this. So now let's move forward here. OK. Now we're going to get into a little bit of 
complicated stellar news all right but it goes deep because with stellar you have to really dig deep to see what's happening behind the scenes because they keep things so quiet and they really don't like to tell you about a lot of major things that's happening so if you remember a long while ago it was announced that stellar had been working with the oldest bank in europe to issue their stable coin now what i think and I, and I didn't even catch this. I'm thinking stablecoin is going to be used. The stablecoin will be used, utilized just like all other stablecoins. But it wasn't that your B stablecoin that they were issuing, which was on Bank uh, Bankhouse Vanderhoit. That was a bank to bank stablecoin, a bank to bank stablecoin. OK, that means that that stablecoin is used specifically for interbank payments or going to be used for interbank payments. Now, keep in mind that. The transaction fees on, on the Stellar blockchain are affected by the uh, amount of value that you're, you're uh, moving, right? So that, that can cause surge pricing. Congestion on the chain also lends towards surge pricing, which then it goes from, you know, what was it like uh, 100 Stroops is the smallest, uh, Stroops, I think that's what they're called. 100 Stroops is like the smallest of the what they call the transaction fees or a piece of lumen, right? It goes from 100 stroops to then they recommended that if you're gonna be moving large amounts of capital, see, this is what we don't take into account often, I think. If you're gonna be moving large amounts of capital, then they recommend 100,000 stroops uh, minimum. 100,000, that's what they said. But of course, this is just what they recommended. They have no idea at that time of writing that article of how much value is actually going to flow through Stellar once we have regulatory clarity. It will be much higher than 100,000 stroops. And then they didn't put a cap that I saw, a cap on surge pricing. So this was done in conjunction with Bitbond, right? So it says here, I just, I'm going to connect some dots. Just follow me here, okay? It says Bitbond. Germany, Germany's leading tokenization and digital asset custody technology provider and Bankhaus van der Hoyt, uh, one of Europe's oldest banks, have joint forces to issue a euro stablecoin on Stellar Network. All right. Now. So now keep that in mind that that stablecoin and you can look this up for yourself. OK, don't just take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. See for yourself. OK, because I may not find a little piece here to post for you. But when I'm telling you something, it's because I read it. All right. And you can look it up for yourself easily. So then you have that. But then I asked myself, I said, wait a minute. If Bitbond is, is first of all, I looked deeply in the bankhouse van der Hoyt. <laughs> then I said to myself, wait a minute. Who else does Bitbond have a connection with? Because if they're doing this for the oldest bank in Europe, which is highly respected. And they recommended Stellar. This is who they recommended. This is who they said, hey. If you want to build something, build it on Stellar because of ease of, of, of issuance of assets and things of that nature. Now you have liquidity pools, smart contracts now. But this was back then before smart contracts. But 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 still, I'm throwing that in there because it's even more delicious. If they if they recommended Stellar to Bankhaus van der Hoyt, who else is Bitbond associated with? And that led me to look, go to Bitbond's website. This is what I do. I have to. I got I have to research. Listen. This is on their front page, bitbond.com. And, and these are the, the, the banks that they're associated with. Hamburg Commercial Bank, Standard Chartered, Deutsche Bank, Unicredit, which didn't we just hear Unicredit also is as a part of RippleNet? Didn't we just, I think we just read that. So now you see again, Stellar uh, or rather XLM and XRP in the same places again. This happens over and over and over again. MBDCs, anybody? MCBDCs? Can we see the new financial system coming together? One for one purpose, one for another? Maybe throw in some Algorand Hedera for smart contracts? You see where this is going? But anyway, Deutsche Bank, Unicredit, so Societe Generale, DZ Bank, ABN AMRO, V Bank. There was a there was a few more. My apologies, everyone. But even that's just that's enough. Now, going back to what I was saying before, what is the likelihood? 
we're playing with ideas here, but there's connections. We just saw the connection. What is the likelihood that if they're going to recommend Stellar for the, one of the most respected banks in Europe, that they're also going to re uh, um, recommend Stellar and the issuance of assets on Stellar to all these lesser banks? I think the likelihood is very good. However, like I said, a lot of institutions are waiting on regulatory clarity. When we have that regulatory clarity, it's going to tell us a lot. It will. It'll take a lot of a lot of dot connecting and research out of the equation because then they can just speak openly. But I think that the likelihood is very good that they are are either recommending, have recommended or will recommend Stellar for the issuance of assets to all these other banks that Bitbond is in deep with to the point where this they're calling them. This these are uh, who they're trusted by. It literally at the top of the column says trusted by industry leaders. So if they trust Bitbond then why would they also not want to utilize Stellar if one of the, the oldest and absolute best banks in Europe is using Stellar? Think about that for a moment. And always know that there's a combination in there. You can always use uh, XLM for one, retail. You can use XRP for wholesale. You can use one for interbank payments. You can use, I mean, there's so many ways to combine them. Throw a little Algorand Hedera in there because they're deep in Europe as well. So I, I want to point that out. Now, let's continue on. OK, let's continue on here. And then. So I also want to read this a little bit before we go a little bit further. Right. Lumens. This is from Stellar.org. I have to tell people there's so many new people. They don't understand the potentiality of XLM. Lumen, the Lumen XLM fulfills a special role in the network by design. Stellar requires that each account hold a small Number of lumens at all times, at all times. That means they're locked up in there at all times. There's only 50 billion lumens, people. We're talking thousands of institutions may be utilizing Stellar at some point. That's institutions. Then how many more people will be utilizing um, XLM because they have to have an account with MoneyGram or LightNet or Velo or EveryNet <laughs> or Stronghold? How many more? There's not going to, this is going to be in the future. Of course, it's going to take time. But in the future, theoretically, XLM might be in rare supply. That, and that means that price could skyrocket. I could be completely wrong. But let me read that again. Stellar requires that each account hold a small number of lumens. It don't take that much when there's only 50 billion. And not, not to mention the people that are holding a ton of lumens looking for an increase on that price. Investors. So then there's that. So I just wanted to read that little tidbit here, right? So then also. It says right now the minimum balance is one lumen. And the minimum per transaction fee is 0 0.00001 lumen. That's the minimum. That's not when surge pricing, surge pricing kicks in. All right. Now, there's a reason I'm saying that. Walk with me. All right. Because this is going to get good. Remember, they have automated market makers. They have liquidity pools. Right. They have liquidity pools. Somewhere on this page, it tells you that that lumens can be used. Let me see if I can find it. Lumens can be used to provide liquidity for otherwise illiquid assets. Now, either way it plays out, whether they're creating liquidity pools on the Stellar network, right? And they keep it open. Let's say institutions and banks create liquidity pools and they probably will. But there's a lot of regular businesses that will create, will create liquidity pools and just individual uh, groups that will create liquidity pools as well that might not be banks. Uh, I mean, uh, not banks, but businesses, so to speak. Now, the liquidity remains as long as the largest contributor to the liquidity pool doesn't pull all their value out of there. Once all that value leaves out of there, where are you going to get the liquidity from? Hmm. Uh, XLM. XLM provides liquidity for otherwise illiquid assets. Anything that could be rendered illiquid on the chain, XLM is uh, utilized or that liquidity is extracted. I would think, correct me if I'm wrong, XLM, that liquidity is extracted to provide liquidity for 
otherwise illiquid assets, a, an asset that has been rendered illiquid on the chain. That obviously has to be what they would be talking about. Now you can flip that in a different way, but at the same time, it still applies. It still applies. Now, that's not to mention that the fact that they brought in automated market makers means that there's a lot of liquidity that's going to be congesting, congesting XLM. You have banks, large business institutions, regular, regular people holding accounts. This is a lot of congestion that's going to be happening in the future. Then MoneyGram just said, what did MoneyGram say? They're going to have cash extraction points or something like that all around the world. That's what they said. Coming, coming soon. And they're almost there. So then you, you're going to have people extracting liquidity at all different times from certain assets, right? So one fiat to another. So they're constantly going to need liquidity on the chain. But nonetheless, let's, let's, let's circle back around. Sorry about that. I'm thinking in pieces, everybody. got to flow with me, please. But all of that activity, conge how much congestion do you think that's going to be? A little or a lot? I think it's going to be a ton of congestion. And then surge pricing kicks in. When surge pricing kicks in, what does it do to the price of XLM? Look up surge pricing. So some of you may not know. Look up surge pricing. Once again, when you have Velo, uh, EveryNet, LightNet, Bankhaus von der Hoyt, <laughs> um, Ukraine, Tascom, Tascom Bank, uh, MoneyGram, Stronghold. My goodness. Then when there's regulatory clarity and you have the states, remember that what was the, the one that one politician from Tex Texas was telling Danelle Dixon, hey, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about Stellar. I think they're going to do the same thing that they're doing with Algorand in, in, in Miami. They're going to they're going to take on Stellar, a lot of the states to uh, issue digital assets and do pay, move payroll, things of that nature. <clears throat> hey, I could be wrong, but what else would he want to speak to her about when it comes to Stellar? Think about that for a moment. So, but Stellar has laid lower than most when it comes to, you know, I think when it comes to uh, acting before regulatory clarity, of course, because they don't want a whole lot of problems from the SEC, right? Let Ripple do his, his job and win, and then everybody else can come out of the shadows and do what they do. Especially because Ripple has the capital to battle the SEC, as you saw, as you see. So that congestion, what does it do to that price? Having all that value locked up on chain, because if you're in the liquidity pool, in order to not render those assets that you're trying to move back and forth through that liquid, in order to not render them illiquid, you would have to keep that value in there, correct? So then that's a lot of value locked up on the chain as well without staking. You get what I'm saying? I mean, or how, how are they going to do it? I don't know. I don't know the particulars of how they do that in a um, closed ecosystem. OK, so. You know, we'll have to look into that, but let's move on here. So then another bank that we have to keep in mind that is running across Stellar is CM Commercial Bank. Why do I say that? We have to watch CM Commercial Bank very closely. Now, the reason I say that is CM Commercial Bank is utilizing who? They're utilizing LightNet. They're utilizing LightNet. What is LightNet built on? LightNet is built on Stellar. That's a lot of value that's going to be coming out of CM Commercial Bank in Thailand, CM Commercial Bank, and flowing across the Stellar blockchain. Every account must what? Hold lumens, okay? Then also, that's more congestion, and congestion causes what? Surge pricing. This is all good towards the future price of XLM, theoretically speaking. So now you have, uh, I have so many documents here. Just bear with me, everyone. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. Um, we have this article. Thailand's largest bank snubs, snubs Ripple. This is an old article, but it's leading somewhere, okay? Thailand's largest bank snubs Ripple, selects Stellar-based blockchain for cross-border payments. What bank are they talking about? They're talking about CM Commercial Bank. I just have to post things like this so that way you can see, you can have verification that what I'm saying is true. Although you should already know that. Like, I'm a researcher. I'm, I'm going to have to provide research and encourage you to do your own research as well. It says, Thailand's oldest bank, so it's respected. Once again, we have Stellar dealing with someone who's respected. They know what they're doing. They know that these old banks have a lot of sway and they're going to influence a lot of lesser banks. They are supervisory entities. They have influence. So it says here, Thailand's oldest bank, CM Commercial Bank, SCB, is set to open a new cross-border remittances corridor in partnership with LightNet. All right. A fintech company that uses what? That uses Stellar 
blockchain. Another bank. All right. So now that's that's not why I'm talking about this, though. CM Commercial Bank is about to explode in the next, I say, like five to 10 years. I'm going to give it five, but I try to think logically. It's like five to 10, but I'm excited. I think I'm going to go with the minimum five in the next five years going to explode. They're already taking action. So why do I say that? Let's see if I can pull this article up. Just bear with me. This is why they're going to explode. Now, remember, since last year, I think I started talking about it in September. I told you that I believe a lot of banks will be in the metaverse, not just uh, headquarters. They will have branches in there. Their workers will, will, will don suits and, and things like that, and they will work in a digital bank in the metaverse. Remember I was saying that? I said that for so a, 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 a ton of videos. Now you have this here. CM Commercial Bank. This is an article from Bloomberg.com, so it's reputable. Thailand's biggest bank by market value, I'm going to add that, the one that's running on Stellar, has become the latest lender seeking to capitalize on the metaverse craze. With a unit announcing plans to set up a headquarters in a version of the internet that's still taking shape. Keep in mind, now, so now, this is going to make them more easily accessible to everyone. This is going to give them more possibilities, more capabilities, more um, uh, lower fees. They'll be able to, uh, you know, issue everything digitally, tokenize everything, and they'll get in on it early. What does that What does that do to them for for um, the the capital that they can bring in? I think it's going to do something great for them when it comes to capital. This is why everybody's trying to get in the metaverse in the first place, right? So it says. SCBX 10X Co, uh, 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 Co, which oversees CM Commercial Bank's PCL's investment in technology startups, will become the first banking group entity globally to, de to develop a headquarters in the sandbox, a blockchain based virtual platform. We know what a sandbox is. The virtual space will be ready for public public visits by the fourth quarter of this year, it said. Its physical uh, head office is in Bangkok. CM Commercial Bank, the Bangkok listed lender in which Thailand's uh, King Maha is the largest shareholder, joins, joins HSBC Holdings, PLC and JP Morgan Chase and company in foraying into the metaverse. They're all going to metaverse. Why? Not for fun, because that's where the money is going to flow from. This is going to cut a lot of costs. You know how I many branches they're going to shut down? They're going to tell their workers, listen, we don't get a lot of traffic in the, the physical branch. We're going to shut it down. You can work from home. This is, what I, this is what I anticipate. You can work from home, just buy a metaverse suit or we'll provide you with a metaverse suit, uniform, whatever, and you can work in the digital branch. They're gonna save a lot of money. They're gonna be able to play with a lot of new capital. What does that do to have that much value locked up on their day? They, hey, they're working with LightNet. You read it yourself. All right, I'll put it somewhere on the screen. What does it do to have that kind of value flowing across Stellar or locked up on Stellar or, ca or causing congestion on Stellar, triggering um, surge pricing? What does it do? This is all theoretical. I could be completely wrong. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Doesn't matter to me whether you buy XLM or sell it. OK, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not here for your money. I'm here for the bank's money, hoping that they come through. It's a bank coin. So um, always have to say that now. So I actually had to print a document. It's the first time I actually printed a document so I, in, in so long. But so you might be asking yourself right now, how much? Um, well, what kind of capital are we looking at coming out of CM Commercial Bank? Well, let's just get a, 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 a light idea. All right. So it says as of June 30th, right, uh, 2022 loans to customers. We're just going to take this amount just to get an idea of the type of capital we're looking at here. Uh, loans to customers accrued interest receivables recorded in the interim consolidated in the bank's financial statements amounted to uh, 2,367 billion Thai baht. Now, um, this is just to give us an idea of how much capital, right? So uh, 2,367 billion Thai baht. I think that's that's somewhere around like $52 million. And that's just loans and uh Loans to customers and accrued interest receivables. OK, so we are talking about respectable amount of capital. But what's important here is how it's going to rapidly expand once they're in a the metaverse, uh, expand on the capital that they're going to be bringing in. Not only that, their influence and in, in convincing other banks in that region 
or rather that they just have influence over to also utilize LightNet, which is built on Stellar. That's what's very important here. Um, so now let's move on here. Another thing that's very, very good that Stellar is doing and we'll keep an eye on as well. Uh, they made this blog post here and it's titled the Stellar Anchor Platform Connecting to Stellar Made Simple. So to sum it all up, what they did was they made it so easy for people to join the anchors platform or become a Stellar Anchor that even a child could do it. Do you understand how many more businesses that's going to bring in? How much more delicious Stellar just became to large business institutions and banks across the world? They simplified everything to an unbelievable degree. And I'm very happy with it. I want us to, I want Stellar to bring in as many partnerships, the deals as possible, as much value as possible. Let's skyrocket that XLM price, which I know is just a byproduct because they're, you know, Stellar Foundation, nonprofit and all that type of stuff. But hey, every net and Velo, I don't know if they, I don't think that they're a uh, nonprofit. But anyway, no, nonetheless, I want everything to happen possible for that XLM price to skyrocket. This is a great thing that they did. Make it even easier. Continue to improve. We saw how fast Stellar is. They're at the top of the list on speeds for blockchains. Um, my goodness, they've done a great job so far, in my humble opinion. So I'm very excited about this. So now let's move on here. If you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it if you click that like button, leave a little comment. It helps promote the video and the algorithm. Uh, without it, I've seen how harsh the algorithm can be. <laughs> and nobody really even sees the videos. So I would greatly appreciate it because I've been putting in some pretty good work on these videos. It's my humble opinion. My humble opinion. I put some pretty good work in uh, on these last few videos. And when I say pretty good, my goodness, the research that I've, that I've done, it's mind blowing. And I still have about 10 tabs open here. We're not even going to get to them today or this video will be an hour and 30 minutes long. So I'm trying to chop a little bit off the top here. So. Let's jump on to another topic, layoffs. Listen, we've been covering these mass layoffs for about, I think we've been covering this since about June. I've been telling you all about these mass layoffs. I showed you the, the um, articles. We've spoken about a few other articles. Uh, this is why everyone knows, not we're in a recession, we're in deceleration. We're heading to, we're in deceleration that could take us right into a depression. We had stagflation already. It's still stagflation. It's still going, it's going up. Um, but now it's, it's more happening in like food prices and such, right? Because the, um, the food producers, farmers and stuff like that, they held off for a long time, not passing, not really the farmer, sorry about that, but the food producers, companies, manufacturers have, they held off for as long as they could passing that, that rise in price over to the consumers, but now they have to in order to survive. So that's why everything is starting to go up more and it's going to go up even more. This is logical. That's, that's. That's deceleration right? when you can't even avoid it anymore. Um, but you have to be careful. A lot of these politicians are delusional. They're, they're still telling you that it's not a recession. I saw a bevy of articles today. They're still saying it's not a recession when their own people, their own people already admitted to a technical recession. They already admitted to it. How do you now come out and you're a, a White House official and you're saying it's not a recession? I, I know you saw those articles as well. I believe you did. That was shocking to me that they're so delusional. But anyway, a little more evidence here it says challenging real estate market forced layoffs of 18 percent of staff. Open door CEO said even real estate laying people off. All of these major companies are laying people off. So what the, the the analysts do, they take a look at like, let's say, jobs report. And they say, well, we have this many job openings this month or this quarter. And what they don't tell the people is a lot of that is like warehouse work and um, places where they're always constantly hiring. And so they're able to put out more job openings now because they always had those jobs open before. They just didn't post the job openings, right? They just, uh, because they, they feel like they have enough people. So, and then there's a lot of incentive behind the scenes for them to do that. So now it, it, the numbers are inflated. It looks like there's a lot more jobs than there really are, even though they're jobs, they're not respectable jobs. They don't replace, let's say an office job. So, so they'll lose two office jobs and let's say uh, 20 warehouse jobs open up. Well, analysts will just say, well, look, there's 20 more. We increased by this amount, this amount. Look, we're doing good. No, because it's not, that's, that's not, they're not equivalents. Those were office jobs. Remember, we just covered an article where there was a mass amount of high level individuals that got, that got laid off. Those jobs aren't replaced by, 
you know, warehouse jobs, retail jobs, such like that. That's not, that's not equivalent. So then they'll use that as a, a technicality to say, listen, we're not in a recession. We're doing good. No, no, we're not. But the American people know, I mean, the people of the West as a whole know, um, because they're the ones feeling the pain. So lie all you want. It doesn't, it's not going to change the facts. So here you have it. Real estate market forced layoffs of 18% of staff. Open Door Chief Executive and Co-Founder Eric Wu announced the layoffs layoffs in a Wednesday blog post, noting that about 550 employees would be affected. So more layoffs. So now let's uh, move on here. So there was a, a great article uh, titled How U.S. Housing Market Became Such a Dumpster Fire. This is on TheRinger.com. Check them out. They did a great job in this article. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because I can't. It's that extensive. Um, I wouldn't do it anyway because I want people to go over there and check them out. I'm going to read this little tidbit here, though. I thought it was very important. It says it begins as such. And you mentioned, too, that the, that there were years of negative housing prices. So it really took several years, even after the great financial crisis, for things to get going. Again, they dropped rates to zero at the end of 2008. So if you want to take a purely rate centric view of the housing market, you're going to miss so much because it's not like cutting rates to zero at the end of 2008. Early 2009 created this big bounce. We're seeing now in 2022 that the surge in mortgage rates really is putting a freeze on the housing market. We covered that recently, didn't we? And we've been I've been warning people since the beginning of this year about the housing market. Have I not? Yes, I have. We blew the whistle on so many different things. Not blew the whistle, but like signaling the alarm, you know, trying to warn people. Don't you know so that your funds, you know, I know a lot of people like to protect their money in the housing market, but you don't want your money to become illiquid. You can't move that. If you can't move that house, if nobody's buying, you got to be careful of everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Gold, silver, know when it's at a low, when it's at a high, <laughs> you know, currencies, be careful. Know when the dollar is strong and it's going to crush other currencies. So just I'm of the mind to protect my value at all times. That's that's how I that's how I am. I'm here to make money, not lose money. Um, so let's continue right here. It says it's is putting a freeze on housing activity It's putting a freeze on home sales. We're seeing this crash in housing uh, starts and so forth. But again, it's not totally mechanical. And to this point about the number of houses that are being built, it's the overused cliche, perfect storm. But we did see this big boom in housing demand started the middle of the 2020, et cetera, with the drop of mortgage rates. But but the supply chain issues were a big part of it. I mean, there were a lot of homes that were homes that there oh, that there was for demand. They they wrote this a little strange. Some my, my apologies. I mean, there were a lot of homes that there was demand for. OK. There were home builders willing to sell them. They just couldn't get them built. And so you just see this brutal after effects of the great financial crisis simply in the ability of the industry to ramp up and create more housing in line with demand. So that's what they had to say about that. This was a tremendous article. All right. So what you do with that information is up to you. <laughs> all right. So I think let's see here. Oh, so. OK, so we're going to end off with this article. I thought I, I, I had lost it um and it's titled u.s senators are calling sec for regulatory malpractice here's why this is good um let's read this little tidbit here it says at at a time when the cryptocurrency market needs stable regulatory environment the u.s sec officials are involved in activities of malpractice According to recent reports, the SEC staff are leaving the regulatory body like never before. Ooh, did not know that. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Well, we've been saying it for so long that someone need to look into them. They need to be held accountable, that there seems to be corruption. And that's what their people said. One of their regulatory entities told Hinman that what he was doing was illegal. And I said I postulated off of that, that if Hinman was involved in illegal activity, that 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 usually there's a lot of illegal activity around allowing it to happen. A lot of people doing wrong things that are allowing that environment, creating that environment for that person to feel comfortable to not only do it once, but to continue with that activity. That was based off of what their regulatory entity said. All right. Uh, and here you're seeing it now. 
the SEC staff are leaving the regulatory body like never before. This trend is interesting, interestingly running a parallel with some of the outgoing SEC officials joining crypto companies. Meanwhile, the U.S. lawmakers have recently written to SEC chairman Gary Gensler seeking an explanation on the recent trend. Quick rulemaking leading to SEC staff quitting. Exactly. They're just so what they're trying to say is that the SEC is just playing everything on the fly by the seat of their pants. They don't know what they're doing. I've been saying that as well. Haven't I? Haven't I? Um, <laughs> this is a great article here on CoinGate.com. I'm going to send you over there to read this. It's on their front page and it's titled once again, U.S. Senators, SEC officials for regulatory malpractice crypto. You know, you got to support these companies that are bringing the good news and good information, doing a lot of hard work. Um, it's just a little bit of typing to go to the website and, and, and support these guys. So I'm just going to leave it at that. We just read that little tidbit. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.